Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video log and in this one we're going to be talking about how to solo queue. So this is a question that I get very often like how slapped, how do you get this high rating by yourself, uh, what can I do to become to, to be able to reach that rating as well and if I don't have anyone to queue with what should I do. Now these are the main points that I'm going to be bringing up. First of all there are five golden rules. The first one is that your best role is pretty much almost always the best choice. If you have a role where you're, which you're exceptionally good at, then you should continue doing that because not only does it improve you as a player, but if you actually deserve a higher rating, then you will eventually get it. Now, rule number two is that if you deserve a higher rating, you are going to get it. Like, I'm so tired of seeing people sit here, sit and say that, well, I could just get bad teammates every game, I, I get that every game, I get that every game. Did you stop to think for one second that this is not what your opponents are experiencing sometimes as well? This is not what I'm experiencing sometimes as well. Everyone gets to experience both the good and bad sides of TMM. Sure, there are sometimes luck involved in terms of teammates and in terms of the skill of the players that are in the game. But eventually, it's going to be ev even, it's gonna even out, just like everything else. Sometimes you might get lucky, but you will reach the MMR you deserve eventually. That is a very important point to make. If you're 1500 and you believe you're 1800, then you would have been 1800. Maybe you are actually a higher level than 1500, but you just simply can't reach it yourself at the moment. Because it's a difference between playing the game as a team and playing the game as a solo cure. Now, rule number three is pick around what your team has, don't be egoistic. And what I mean by this is that this is specifically important in higher brackets, but always pick, pick what's best for the team. Like sometimes you guys even see me pick supports uh, in higher TMM. Like I, don't get me wrong, I love supporting, but I don't love supporting in TMM. As you guys, uh, like supporting Sync or X Sync Esports is really fun. Like you guys saw me play Pyro at Dreamhack. I did really fucking good that particular game. Got like 15 kills or something and just had a generally good game. And playing support with my team is something that I really enjoy. But when it comes to Team M, I don't. Now, the point here is that even though you might not actually like supporting or like what you're going to have to do to win, it is a better choice to pick what's best. Like, w w would you like to have five carries or four carries and one support? Like, imagine what you can do to help those four carries do better instead of thinking about yourself and how you're going to uh, carry the game instead of the other four. And that's a really important po point to make as well. Now, rule number four is communication is key to everything. And what I mean by this is that I have won so many games by guiding and leading my team, being positive, telling them what to do, do this, do that. Now, yes, I will admit that being who I am is a little bit of an advantage because since people know, well, most people know who I am when I play TMM, they will listen to me because I play for X and Keysports. But even then, I've sometimes queued off stream, I've queued on uh, other accounts, I've People have not known who I am, and I have still managed to car carry them to victory. And I did that test just to make sure that, well, is this possible to do if you're not playing for a pro team? And it was. I won so many games there as well just by guiding them with my voice. You don't always have to be the leader or the guide. I'm just saying that communication is the key. Calling miss, saying that you're going to be ganking, telling your carry that, dude, maybe you should join the fight a little bit earlier. I think we should push the bottom tower. Maybe we should kill Conger, guys. You don't have to be, uh, like, tell them that this is what you're supposed to do. But you should try and, like... Uh, convince them into doing what you think might be best for the game at the current point. Now, point rule number five is don't flame, teach people to become better. I do it sometimes, sometimes I get mad, everyone does, but I barely ever rage at my teammates because I know it's bad. Sometimes I do tell the stream that like, this guy is pretty bad, he's doing a lot of bad shit, he could be doing this instead, but I don't have to tell him that in the game. And what The point is that you, you should be the same. You're, you, maybe you don't have a stream which you're talking to, but you're probably thinking in your head, like, holy fuck, this guy is so bad. How can you be this bad at the game? Like, it's not possible. But instead, maybe you'll tell him that, yeah, dude, like, uh, you're not really playing that well right now. Maybe you should try and do this instead. And uh, maybe you could jump, come join me for a couple of ganks. Maybe we can do this and try uh, and help uh, like just win the game together. And after the game, uh, or maybe you're too mad. So just after the game, tell him that, dude, you should probably not play that hero you, you uh, at right now. Like you maybe should practice a little bit more on him. Um, maybe you should do that. Maybe you should check a little bit more on your mini map. Give him a friendly tip. I do that a couple, like quite often, to be honest. Because sometimes when I get into a, 
a, a game with viewers or people that uh, know who I am, they always um, ask me like, how was I? Did I play good last game? Did, did, I, did I play well? What can I do better? And I, and I tell them the honest truth all the time. So the final golden rule of them all is be the bigger man or woman. Just if they're flaming, either mute them or just listen through their shit. Try and calm him or her down, which will most likely be a him. Uh, try to calm them down and just make them focus on the game. Anyway, now that we're past the golden rules, let's go into how to how do I solo queue or how to solo queue uh, when you're playing Heroes of the Earth. So let's talk about NAEU first, and let's talk about what I do. So in between uh, the 1500 to 1750 bracket, I pretty much play mid all the time. Uh, I play the heroes, my top 6 list is Hag, Doctor, Bubbles, Kinesis, Pyro, and Chipper. As you can see, all heroes that are incredibly good in lane and can snowball very efficiently. And now, the way you want to be playing and slash approaching the game is that you don't want to be spending too much time in your mid lane. You want to try and beat him, and hopefully you will. Like I. I am obviously like a 2100, well, 2100 MMR player, and I will 95% of the time, or 99, win my mid lane against 15 to 1750, unless I do a mistake or something. But even for you, or any rating you are at, try and win your lane, but the entire point of playing these heroes is to gank the side lanes. Spend more time ganking your suicide, spend more time ganking your short lane, make sure those two lanes win, because if you win two out of three lanes, excluding the mid, or even go m even in mid, let's say that you kill him at level 6 in mid, that, which means you have an advantage, then spend way more time on the side lanes. Get a blink as soon as possible. All of these heroes have, well, Hag has a built-in blink, Doctor has a built-in blink, Bubbles, Kinesis, Pirate Chip are all our good blink, uh, blink heroes. Just make sure you gank the side lanes, because those are what's going to be affecting the game. Because, as you guys are aware of, there are a lot of ragers in the lower TMMs and the lower brackets, and in order to help these people slash not make them rage, is most efficiently made by ganking their lane so they ensure their victories and they get good stats because sadly most people care about stats more than anything else and stats doesn't mean shit whatsoever so gank side lanes put most of your emphasis of your play on the side lanes but make sure you don't not letting him free farm mid you don't want their mid to do the same thing you wanna go even or win and then make sure to gank as much as you can I, I'm sure you guys have seen me I actually played like I showed you guys what I did uh, back in the days when I did boosting, which is illegal, so I can't do it anymore. Um, I I showed on stream that how how I got 1750 MMR the fastest, and I picked Hag, and in four games I was 1750 because I basically got I think I got a blood buff four 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 games in Immortal three times, right? <laughs> Does that match up in the numbers? Point being is that it's it's very very simple as long as you just gank all the time. Between the 1750 to 1900 bracket, I usually play mid or carry heroes such as Silhouette, uh, Dark Lady, uh, or Doctor Repulsor. Once again, just very strong uh, carries that can do like that can win the games by themselves are very very good in this bracket. And in this bracket, most people will be warding, they will be upgrading carriers, and you will have relatively good vision in order to win the game. Which is why it's a more efficient bracket to play carry than in the 15 to 1750 bracket. Because if your mid gets wrecked in the 15 to 1750s, you're probably gonna have a bad time. Now, uh, after 1900 plus, it let's say you are a 2K player, you made a new account and you wanted to get to 2K, then your best role, regardless of whatever it is, is what you should be playing. Because this is the bracket where you will most likely be improving the most. This is the bracket that you do belong to, and this is where you wanna practice. Now. I still have hold my things that your best role is always the best choice regardless of what bracket because you might even learn a thing or two in the lower uh, parts of the brackets. But so so yeah, the golden rule I talked about earlier, your best role is always the best choice, but in terms of gaining the MMR the fastest, what I just said is how I gain MMR the fastest. And I also don't think that I learned that much between the 15 and 1900s whatsoever, and that's why I'd rather just play fun heroes or heroes that I think will win me the game faster than I would if I played another role. But yeah, your best role regardless above 1900, I always stick to the best role, but if you wanna play other things, I would say that mid 15 to 1750 is very good, 1750 to 1900 is mid slash carry. Now, you gotta think of something here though, like not everyone can play mid or carry, there are only two roles here, and only two players in the actual game will be able to do this. So if there's five solo cures in the same game, what golden rule is applied? Of course, Pick what's best for your team. If 
there are other players who have already called their lanes or already called their roles or even refuses to go in the other lane. Be the bigger man or woman, take the other role, do your best, try and win the game. Don't fight with the other guy or girl who's trying to steal your lane. There are only two roles that can play those two that I just mentioned. Sorry, two players. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right. Then after this, I've been in Thailand now since the 31st. So I've been here for almost two weeks. Well, two weeks actually. And of course, I've picked up a thing or two. Now, <laughs> it was very different in the Thai servers because <laughs> as you guys are aware, it's everyone kind of picks carry. You, they don't buy any wards and they don't really upgrade the courier ever. So the golden rules that I have learned is that jungling is actually the best way of solo queuing in the Thai team between 1500 and 1750. I did a, an off stream test just to make sure. I picked jungler every game and I went uh, 8 and 0 and was 1780 by those 8 games. And it was so fucking easy. Like, cause. And the reason for that is because no one really jungles unless it's a Doctor of Pulsar jungle, which is mostly in high TMM, or it's a Legionnaire with Helm of the Black Legion in early, in early brackets. But if you pick jungle very early, no one else is going to take your jungle. If you pick mid, you might end up having a Nomad stealing your last hits when you're playing Drunken Master and ending up taking your Punch Dagger and shit goes, well, shit goes bad really fast. So I actually found jungling to be the most efficient role between 15 and 1750 after a couple tests. I didn't only test it once, and I've tried every role except support. I haven't tried support yet between 15 and 1750, so I can't comment on that. And obviously it would take longer time because you would be very a lot less likely on getting Bloodbath or Immortal. And there are also a rule here that I have, and that's buy your own wards and up knock or up courier yourself because it's most likely not going to be upgraded. And you're most likely not going to have any wards. You just need to buy one or two every now and then. So, jungling, 15 to 1750, but the golden rule still applies. If you have a better role, you should probably practice that. But please, don't fight with your teammates. Don't take their... like. Just let them do what they want. If, kids will always be kids. They will always take the lane regardless. And there's nothing you can really do about it. So just be the bigger man or woman. Uh, after 1750, uh, I actually continued with jungling as well. I found it to be relatively easy there as well. People actually bought wards now. They upgraded the courier. And it was a way more smoother experience. Uh, I really dislike playing Ophelia in this bracket though. Because people don't know how to win with Ophelia. And Ophelia is not a very good hero for Thai Team M in general. And I learned that because of the way uh, Thai Team M uh, plays. They don't really play that aggressive slash early aggression push-ish style like we do sometimes in NAEU. And people are not really aware of how that strategy works at all. I would say MRR is a team that is very very good at this strategy and they are players who are all capable of do performing this strategy, strategy excellently. But you won't find MRR players in the 1750 bracket. You will find regular Team M players. So I do not recommend playing a feel like even for someone who has my skill with that hero. Uh, I would still not want to play it in that racket because I just l noticed that they just don't know how to play with that hero. Uh, and it's hard for me to play as well as I could do in 1750 with a field in NAEU. I can pick a field in NAEU in 1500 and people still know how to play with the hero. But they're not really used to it on these servers. Uh, but yeah, alternatively, your best role. And also here, people are not really fighting over roles. If you call mid, you will get mid. So I would simply just say pick what you're best at. And I would still say that, as I explained in my previous video log, people are very, very tryhard on the Thai Team M servers, which is a good thing. So I would recommend you to pick very strong heroes if it's MMR you want to get. Uh, heroes such as Kraken that are really good against current meta, like uh, heroes like Silhouette and Dark Lady and all of that. Get that Kraken ult, focus their carry, get him down. Uh, Kraken's a very good hero if you play him good. As well as the other heroes I mentioned earlier are, are also fit for playing in this bracket. But in terms of choosing heroes, it's really up to you. It's only the role that you will have to choose yourself. Now, when we come up to the 1900 to 2K bracket on Thai TMM, I talked a little bit about that in my thoughts on Thai TMMs so far. And the way you win these games by solo queuing is by picking tryhard and counter picking the enemy heroes. Like, you will be facing or having a Doctor and Behemoth on your team 9 out of 10 games. You will be facing tryhard lineups every, every single game. So pick to counter. What I mean is that maybe you get, maybe you're playing against a Doctor Repulsor. Magebane is an amazing hero if you play the carry. I'm sorry, if you play carry, Magebane is an amazing hero. 
uh, against Dr. Repulsor. So is Cersei if you're playing support. Against Dr. Repulsor, against Behe, Cersei is very good if you manage to get your ulti off. Keep in mind that you can still take over Doctor even if she's flying away, as long as she doesn't fly out of leash range. So that's a support that I think would be really good. I also really like uh, heroes that can survive because I'm not sure... Well, I can't really answer this 100% truthfully, but I'm not actually sure if it's because of who who I am or if it's because of pe uh, type people putting a lot of emphasis on the mid lane but I get heavily ganked every freaking game when I play mid uh, when I play mid so I I prefer having heroes with either escapes or being really tanky um, yeah I prefer heroes that are either really tanky or has escapes when I play the mid lane on, in a 1900 plus because they do put shit tons of emphasis on mid Roaming behemoths. I even played like a Pebbles who roamed at me level 2. And he was short lane. Like I was like, I was so mind boggled that I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what? That would never happen in NAU. <laughs> so yeah, pick try hard, pick to counter. And if you're not sure, this is sadly not an educational video on how to uh, counter hero picks, so I can't really tell you what how to counter every single hero in the game right now. That's not what I'm here for. I'm only telling you what how you're supposed to be solo queuing and what the golden rules are and what I've found to be the best so far in the Thai servers right now. I did explain the NAEO before. But yeah, strong tanky heroes uh, that with escapes that has initiation in the mid lane is always good. When it comes to carries, Clank, Silhouette, uh, Dr. Pulsar, Dark Lady are all very good heroes in the 1900 plus because everyone is so used to playing with them. Like I'm taking this, these heroes because they are picked almost every game, so people are used to playing with them. That's the meta. Like they know, okay, these are the heroes. Well, I'm going to be playing around this, so they're they're used to it. And in this bracket, like I said, they pick tryhard, so you should be able to get the role that you want to. Uh, if you don't, pick the role that is best for your team. And uh, yeah, I that was all I wanted to say so far. Now, this was Vigilar number two speaking about TMM uh, in Thailand and as well as some uh, information on NAEU. I will be doing... Uh, uh, two more video logs about TMM probably. One explaining the difference between NAEU in terms of picks, uh, aggression, and all of that. And a last one uh, with my final thoughts on Thai TMMs uh, while I've been down here. So once again, thank you for listening. I hope you found this to be informative and that you will learn something. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So, yep. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my facebook.com slash slapped, twitch.tv slash too easy, and my talk talk as well. I do stream every single day except Saturday, so you can find my links on either of these two. You can also follow me on Twitter on twitter.com slash bslap. But whenever I go live, it will be announced on Twitter and on Facebook. So, yep. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next one.